All right, let's look a little closer at mesoscale winds. And in each of these cases, we're going to see that um, they are created because why is wind created in the first place? Because it wants to go from a high to a low pressure. And specifically, these kind of medium scale winds have to do with um, the, the uneven heating. So remember, um, we said that if you have a blob of air that is hot, I'll just put, um, well, let's see, I better spell out hot. So I just put an H there. If we have a chunk of air that's hot or warm and a chunk of air that's cold or cool, we said that, um, and this is like uh, creating a horizontal difference in pressures, we said that the hot one will generally be kind of a low pressure and the cold one will be a high pressure. So there you go. Along those lines, then, we can talk about some of these kind of medium scale winds. We already talked about the sea and the land breeze, and I'm going to revisit that as an example of a medium mesoscale wind. We're going to talk about a valley breeze and a mountain breeze. Now remember, when we talk about these different breezes, the word before the, 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 word, before the word breeze actually says where the wind is coming from. Uh, we'll talk about Chinook winds, otherwise known as Foen uh, winds in other places in the world, Katabatic winds, and country breezes. So just to kind of remind you about the sea breeze and the land breeze, remember it has to do with the fact that um, a large body of water will be kind of stubborn to heat up as, uh, as the earth spins on its axis and it sees a little bit of sun. It won't heat up as quickly as the land will and it has consequences. And then as the sun sets, when uh, the cooling process starts at that part of the world, um, then the, it'll be stubborn to cool down. And so we talked about these sea breezes or lake breeze. You'll have um, uh, coming at about max out about 3 p.m. And then these uh, land breezes and outgoing breeze will occur at night. Okay, so here is a figure from your textbook just to kind of remind you how that works. So what happens is we have... Um, over the water, we have just our general decrease in pressure as you're going up 160 millibars to 800, excuse me, 988 millibars at upper elevations. Okay, um, the water tends to during the day. I know it's during the day because we've got the sun up here. It tends to uh, warm uh, slowly, so it will stay relatively cold when the land will heat up more quickly and so that warm the warmth of the land will create a low pressure over the land and so here at the surface remember we have a push from the high pressure over the cooler waters to the low pressure over the land and then we kind of talked earlier how actually this um, the air will uh, tend to want to ascend here from this low and it creates this high pressure aloft and then we almost kind of have a little circulation cell at upper elevations then we do have an outgoing breeze during the day but at lower elevations we have an incoming breeze or a sea breeze then at nighttime we have a different scenario notice that at nighttime what we end up with is our um, our land will cool more quickly than our water so it's the water's relatively warm so then um, our land will have a, since it's cool, it will tend to have at the surface anyway, a high pressure, a low pressure out over the water. And this could be the lake or the sea. And so, of course, then at the Earth's surface, we have this outgoing breeze or this land breeze. I don't know if you can see it going this way, from a high to a low always, like we talked about. And then the air out there over the water actually um, will tend to create a high pressure aloft and aloft over the land will be a low pressure so then we kind of have this cell where actually at upper elevations we do have a land excuse me a sea breeze at upper elevations but at lower elevations we have this land breeze remember the the, the word before the word breeze is where it's coming from <laughs> Okay, so valley breezes and mountain breezes. Again, has to do with um, differences in heating. Here's the deal. So you have to kind of picture a slope or a mountain. 
Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the sun in here. That's my sun. And it says regions along the slope of the mountain will heat more quickly. Okay, so here I'm going to put hot and I'm going to put cool down here. Okay, this, this is the, what we would call the mountain, mountain region. And down here, this is the valley region. Okay, now apply what we know about hot and cold. Cold air tends to be more dense, so it's a high pressure, H for high pressure. The warmer air along the upslope, the mountain part, we would call is a relatively low pressure. So can you see then as the sun rises during the daytime, we get what we call a valley breeze. What does a valley breeze mean? It means it's coming from the valley going up. Okay, It's like an upslope breeze. Well, let's look at the different scenario. And now let's say up our mountain, actually, it will cool. The air is less dense, so that means it cools more quickly. And the valley will retain its heat, so it'll stay warm. And now we end up with a low pressure down here in the valley and a high pressure up here in the mountain. So actually, then that's a downslope um, wind. That would be what we call a mountain breeze. Okay, so mountain breezes occur at night in the evening. Mountain breezes when the sun sets. Valley breezes when the sun rises or during the daytime. So this, this figure goes with that valley and mountain breezes. So valley breezes are predominant uh, during the day. Um, they're most predominant in the summer months versus the winter months. And notice that those valley breezes can sometimes bring uh, cloud cover. Um, and then this is showing you at nighttime where we have a mountain breeze. Not bad. I like these figures. Chinook winds or phone winds. And actually the word Chinook in um, Indian means snow eater. The reason they're called snow eater is because they are very warm winds, exceptionally warm. And I'll kind of show you maybe why these winds are so warm. Um, they occur on the leeward, remember, versus the windward. The leeward is the, the not windward side of a mountain. Chinook is this sort of wind that is associated with the Rocky Mountains um, on our west coast. And the term phone, phone, uh, wind is uh, associated with a different mountain range, the Alps, but it's the leeward side. It's the same phenomenon that's happening. Um, they're predominant in the wintertime. And what happens is, let me draw my mountain. This is the Rockies, okay, and we talked about, we'll talk more about actually how we kind of have a prevailing westerly wind. Okay, air is forced up over the mountains, and if it is forced down on the leeward side, it will go ahead and it will contract, okay? And as it contracts, it will warm. So there you go. That's why our Chinook winds are so darn warm. So we're talking about one of these downslope winds on the leeward side of the mountain. These winds, uh, again, most notably during the wintertime, can be relative, very strong, 90 miles per hour. And they are very warm. So that if, if a system like this passes you, you can, your temperatures can warm 40 degrees Fahrenheit in a short period of time. Snow eating winds. Oh my goodness. Santa Ana winds, actually, they are of notoriety. notoriety? They're famous for um, uh, sometimes aggravating forest fires. Santa Ana winds are on the, um, the western slopes, so the windward side of the Rockies, and they're caused by a high pressure that is over the Rockies. Um, most notably in the fall, but sometimes in the spring, Santa Ana winds, they also, as the air goes down, the air, um, the volume becomes less, or the, it, it becomes squeezed, and so it warms. And so you, this is definitely another warm, um, warm downslope wind. The timing oftentimes is uh, when conditions are already dry in the fall and 
that can this this Santa Ana wind can aggravate forest fires. Catabatic winds are associated with a plateau and um, has to be in a cold region. So good um, candidates for that would be Antarctica in the southern hemisphere and Greenland in the northern hemisphere. So remember what a plateau is. Basically, it has risen out of the water and it's flat and then it kind of uh, falls back into the water. Okay, this is a plateau. So what happens is that, and these are cold regions, Antarctica and Greenland, so what happens is that the air cools on top of the plateau and uh, cool air is dense and so this cold air basically builds up and then after it builds up it will kind of slough off one side of the plateau and as it falls down it creates these intense winds. Um, how fast do they blow? 60 miles per hour or so. And actually, if you look at my miscellaneous YouTube videos for Chapter 7, I do have a, a picture of a catabatic wind. And they repeat themselves. So after that cold air, because it was more dense, basically falls off the plateau, it can build up again because these are cold regions. The last one is called a country breeze. So since the word country is before breeze, it must be coming from the country relative to the city. So these are my skyscrapers, okay? Not very good drawing here. And this is my country. It's not water now, it's country. <laughs> we have a country mouse out here and a city mouse there. Um, so one of the things about all this concrete in these cities is that actually they retain their heat and so they will stay hot and as they stay hot then what we know about warm air or hot air is it tends to be a relatively low pressure and so here we have our higher pressure out here and so voila, there is your horizontal difference in pressures and there is your country breeze um, another thing of note is that and actually um, sometimes this is called the ur urban island heat effect and yeah, I think your textbook addresses it in the special topics. Uh, urban island heat effect. And it is not just the concrete that tends to make our cities warm, but actually the lack of vegetation sometimes can kind of aggravate that too. So actually, um, it is possible, yeah. Sorry, as the sun sets, there's, there's a relatively low pressure in the city. Yeah. I was going to say, there's no city breeze. There's always a country breeze. It comes from the country into the city. Now, one of the thing about kind of this, this country breeze coming from all directions is that it can kind of make the city basically kind of keep it. The pollution that the city puts out, the city keeps that pollution because it kind of has a positive pressure. Um, directing in all directions towards it.